greetings, infinite blessings, and welcome to another moment of now and another episode of Midday Mindfulness. Today we're going to talk about self-belief, challenging what you believe yourself to be able to achieve and continuously striving for new experiences in order to be able to break past and view the world in a new way each and every moment. If you believe yourself to only ever be able to exist within a certain bubble of potential, then that is what you will always experience. By challenging what you believe yourself capable of achieving, you're able to then go ahead and actually achieve that which you are able to achieve. You always have the potential there. It just depends on the experiences you have to then the confidence you have and the abilities you then have. And I'm actually going to, in a moment, introduce a very, very special guest, Kate Strong. So her name says it all. She is a world champion triathlete through long distance, through cycling, running, swimming. And she is going to share with us the reason that she goes about challenging her body and her mind and continuously evolving past what she previously was able to experience. So give me a moment and I will introduce Kate. Hello. Hi, Kate. How are you? Very well, thanks. How are you? Very good, thank you. So, thank you from the bottom of my heart and with all my soul for being part of this experience, part of my journey, and for doing me the honor of coming on the show to share information about yourself and your story and why it is that you continuously challenge yourself and your old version of perception. So every time that you believe yourself capable of achieving something, you continuously strive forwards to break those barriers of misperception and achieve things past what you were previously even able to comprehend. So it's people like yourself that continue to bring the evolution to humanity on a global scale because it's breaking past previously perceived barriers and limitations. It's amazing, truly. So wow. please, please, <laughs> please introduce. <laughs> Sorry, carry on. Please introduce yourself. Um, let everybody know a little bit about what you do and your journey so far. Brilliant. Uh, my name is Kate Strong, and thank you so much, King, for what a wonderful introduction. Uh, it, it's interesting to hear how other people perceive me because I don't see sometimes what what you've just described. Because to me, I I wake up in the morning and all I do is. Uh, I try and do my best and honour what commitments I've said to the world. So uh, sometimes that might inspire others, sometimes it might confuse or challenge. Yet mm -hmm. my, my mission here is purely to, to do things with love in my heart and to inspire others to remove the glass ceiling of their potential. Uh, and specifically what I'm doing is spending a lot of time on a bicycle uh, at the moment for mm -hmm. I'm tr training to not just attempt one world record but three world records on the 7th of January and that is to open up the conversation about how we limit ourselves how the greatest block to our own elevation in our lives be that in sport physically mentally spiritually or emotionally usually comes from within Beautiful. because we've in internalized the conversation from before or we have taken on board someone else's criticism as fact, mm -hmm. rather than just a perception of what is possible. And so I've decided to use my own life as that example to show that it's no shame in aiming for something great. It's not to diminish anyone else's greatness. It's purely to hold the space, as we talked last week about creating that vacuum yep. for other people to fill as well. So I'm striving for three world records so other people can see the greatness in them too beautiful leading by example so hey, give me a moment and i will actually share the the screen so that we're able to to talk about it can you see the screen now yes so this is the world record that you're starting the 
or you're you're going to achieve on the 7th of January yes is that yeah. correct yes beautiful um, so there's actually three world records um, yeah. <laughs> <not two. laughs> condensed into a single day or to 24 hour period so it's the furthest distance in in an hour in 12 hours and in 24 hours yes beautiful and as you were saying it you've decided to to group them all together so that you can focus all of your energy and attention onto that point that event so that you can have more focus and more attention more excitement more energy delivered into that into the not just the one but the three world records back to back yeah i think it also again steps up a bit more i have attempted the 24-hour record before but imagine trying to do your best one hour and then staying on the bike for another 23 hours. It, it's, it's a different level again for my mindset. It's a different level again for, for my comfort zone. So it's, it's really pushing me a lot. Of course, because we could give everything we had for an hour potentially, but then to give everything for an hour and then continuously give everything for the next 11 to reach the 20, 12 hours period and then carry on to the 24 hour period you're not only challenging your body, but your mind to break barriers each and every moment that you're continuing forward. It's amazing. Yeah. Truly. Thank you. And of course, it's only the warm up, as you've just said. <laughs> yes. So, 2022 begins your, how, what was you called it? Limitless challenge. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. So explain again what it is you're doing and the reasons why more than anything, because there's a lot of people that will be listening that will see you as inspirational, but also be fully aware of how much dedication and effort it takes just to get to the point of potentially running a marathon as an example. It's a dedication beyond that, which most people would put themselves in a position to experience let alone achieve so why why is it you do what you do as well as what it is that you will be doing yeah so just before i share what the physical activities i'll be doing you know to date where we're recording it's the 10th of november 2020 and i'm mm -hmm. planning something in june 2022 mm -hmm. there is no chance i could attempt what i'm striving for in the future today and to tell you the truth it feel, fills me with not just fear but a bit of dread okay. uh, people, people have you know tried and, and died in what i'm what i'm i'm driving for mm -hmm. but I, I i the faith i have is who i will be in the future is not a reflection of who i am today so every day i do my best as i as i touched on earlier with the faith that that will build up to being able to reach the top of that mountain be it the actual mountain that I'm striving for, or the book to complete, or that new sense of you know waking up feeling content, whatever each person's mountain is. We, we may not get it today, but it's that cumulative effect. Every step will get us one step closer towards that summit or that peak that we're striving for. Beautiful. Holding the final destination in mind whilst you're enjoying the journey towards that point knowing that you will experience it, that you will achieve it through, would you say it's a combination of self-belief, trust, giving yourself in completion outside of what you can almost consciously comprehend. So what I'm here to do, I can't actually put into words still because there is nothing to refer it to. I know within myself, there's an energetic imprint and I know what it is i don't know how i'm going to do it i just know i'm going to do it and it's for me it's a combination of giving myself up almost to say if it is within god's will or the universe or if it's divinely guided if it's part of what is to be experienced it will be i give myself freely in order to achieve that which i'm here to achieve and then for me it allows it all to be so much more fluid and free-flowing and it also integrates the self-belief from previous experiences so i previously experienced and achieved a certain amount of things up to this point now so i take that 
confidence and self-belief and use it as a foundation to build future potential experiences from as well as injecting that excitement and for me excitement is the fuel that that keeps that that engine going yeah yeah i think you summed it up wonderfully in that we need to have these big goals we need to be able to take tangible actions Mm -hmm. yet still leave some space for the universe to provide we can't know everything if we do we'll only have a beautiful life so we need to let go and have faith that we'll know what we need to know we'll have what we need to have when we when we need it and that isn't today so yeah that's very true it's about connecting emotionally you know to to be able to feel the joy and excitement of what we will be who we will be what we will have what we will achieve and accomplish but not actually being able to describe it in words, just feeling it in our body, I think is more than enough. And just as it will actually the most powerful part of this all. Beautiful. Yes. I, I would wholeheartedly agree there. And it's, it's knowing that that version of yourself does exist now because you can see yourself achieving it. So that version exists energetically now and it's staying aligned with that version of yourself. And every time that you are on a path towards that self, you will feel it as freedom, as joy, as excitement. It will be effortless in that journey forwards, not effortless in, <laughs> in the continued daily challenge and rigorous, strenuous activity that I'm sure you set yourself to achieve and to continuously move past, breaking previous personal bests and continuously being aware of what you're ingesting not only physically through food and sustenance but also mentally keeping yourself mentally stimulated in the place of mindfulness mindfulnessly relaxation because again at the moment the current situation is very easy to feel very repressed very there's a lot of heavy energy within the collective and staying focused on something outside of what you are currently able to experience means that you are already breaking those barriers that separate you from that self. So it's beautiful. Yeah. And, and you, you know, the word effortless is really important because you're right. Sitting on a bicycle, you can see it behind me for six, eight, 10 hours, some days <laughs> and knowing I've got the same the next day, yeah. it, it can be seen as heavy and a burden. But if in our hearts we've already imagined, if in our minds we've already visioned what will open up, that's the easy bit. Hmm. So I spend as much time off the bike in meditation, visualizing, working on my mental strength. So even in the face of injury, even in the face of a challenge, it is effortless because I know a solution will come forth. So it's about keeping the focus to stay motivated even when things aren't going right. Yep. in the moment it's perfect and becoming more resilient that i am still moving forward to whatever my destiny may be beautiful and it's clear to see that you're living in alignment with your soul's purpose with who you are for the reason that you're here the experiences you're here to have and that is what again brings in that that joy that excitement and the feeling of ease so anytime something is easy if so if somebody listening enjoys doing art as an example and you could do some artwork and then next thing four hours has gone by and you didn't even realize because you're just in that state of being anytime we enter into meditation we enter into that state of being where it bypasses the want to control or the want to do the egoic mind with its desire to achieve and to be and to label things and anytime we're in the flow in harmony with our with our soul it's the same sort of feeling time seems to just it seems non-existent almost and we're able to experience things simply because we can as opposed to the fact that we feel we have to so i'm sure that there's there are days where you think oh i have to get up and do whatever it is that i'm doing today but the underlying current the underlying vibration is that this is my choice this is who i am this is what i want to do and that is an incredible incredible way to live life it's the way we should all live life. And it is the way that by being an inspiration, such as you are, that you can be that beacon of light to assist others to go, okay, how about actually I try? And I just day by day set myself small challenges to allow for my subconscious mind and my 
my physical self to continuously adapt and move past previous barriers. Like you say, the glass ceiling is realizing that once we step out the other above it, that we can experience everything that was outside of that bubble of safety previously. And that every time we exit a previous barrier of limitation through fear, as an example, that we can experience things outside of that bubble of fear within what was previously seen as fearful, it then becomes normal and natural. And then there's always another layer, another barrier to break forwards. And it's that continuous journey. And I keep wanting to say excellence and perfection is, is striving for perfection. But in truth, everything is already perfect. As I teach myself, the universe is perfect. Otherwise, it wouldn't be who we are today. You're perfect. I'm perfect. We're all perfect. It depends on which version of perfection you wish to experience to what you go about actually mindfully choosing and setting actions in place to then achieve. So yeah, it's yeah. honestly, it's, it is such an inspiration to see what you're doing and the, the three tiered world record that you're going to be doing into 2020 or 2022 into 2023. Um, again, why have you chosen to do this? Because it's never been, <laughs> it's never been attempted before by anybody. Well, my background, uh, when I lived in Australia, I went through quite a tumultuous breakup and that's when I realized I'd compromised my life and decided to start living. I call it selfishly, but all it meant was I said yes to the most important person in my life, which was me. I said Beautiful. I put me first. Beautiful. And I fell in love with triathlon, swimming, cycling and running because that was something mm -hmm. I'd given up on by listening to my ex-partner. And so fast forward eight years where we are today, uh, I realized that I still had a passion for long distance ultra efforts. And I decided to put together my, my passions of swimming, cycling and running, but not in that confined of a race. Mm -hmm. And I've each three of these goals that you'll see shortly, I had on my list, on my, not bucket list, but I'll do before I'm 50. So I'm 41 and I just thought I'd create that. Yet through lock, lockdown, which happened at the beginning of this year, I had a lot of time to reflect and realize that I was using my age as a reason to play small, using it as a way to stay in my comfort zone and not push myself. And so after a deep conversation, I decided to combine the three and create, as you said, the limit, <laughs> challenge. <laughs> Beautiful. So, yeah, so the first one is 3,000 miles cycling from coast to coast, the west to the east of the US of A, in the, U the world's toughest road race called Race Across America. And it does cover, you know, the Annapolis Mountains and the Rocky Range, uh, as well as multiple different weather conditions. Mm -hmm. And that always happens in June. Mm -hmm. So I'm intending to cycle 22 hours a day for seven to eight days to complete it. Uh, again, to, to, to be my best, I have to aim to be the best, otherwise I'm capping my own potential. So I'm aiming to, to be first female finisher, which Amazing. is why I need to cycle as fast as I am. If I'm not, so be it, I found my level. But if I don't aim for that, I'll never will. Beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. 22 hours a day. Let's just actually comprehend that for a moment. 22 hours a day. For six, did you say six days? About a week, seven, uh, seven, eight seven, days. Six, seven or eight days. That, that boggles the mind. It, it's most, I can't actually comprehend cycling for 22 hours, let alone for six or seven days in a row. So it, it shows that, as you said yourself, it's mind over matter because you saw a potential limitation and a reason for your, let's use the word ego again, the part of you that wants to keep yourself safe, which can often be seen as a part which tries to limit us. It's trying to keep you safe, the ego. And what it doesn't understand or is fearful of, it will try to prevent you from experiencing because there's potential danger involved. Whether it's a physical danger or a danger of becoming embarrassed, let's say, through failure, it's still a potential danger. So it will try and limit you. You saw this and you actually then went about not only overriding it, but putting three challenges in place to say, I have control over everything I experience. 
and I will not be limited by any factor that is created within my mind. That is phenomenal. Absolutely <laughs> phenomenal. Thank and for, the, for this, I will have a team behind me, around eight to nine people supporting me nutritionally, mentally, physically, mm -hmm. emotionally, to make sure that I one follow the right path and get to the end as well. Uh, okay. And and then the challenge is, I have just two months before I attempt to swim the English Channel, deemed, as you can see, the Everest of swimming. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> which is as the crow flies 21 miles of swimming but usually uh, it takes a lot longer because the current carries you so it could be up to say 30 plus miles in temperatures of around 17 18 degrees centigrade and it will be just in a bikini or a bathing costume yeah so, uh, i have two months to right. put on a lot more weight because i'll be losing weight as well through the cycle of course and, and then also prepare myself to to swim in the water for up to 12 plus hours well it'll be it'll be summer so it's a good excuse for lots of ice creams yes very true <laughs> and get, get you used to that route. cold <laughs> yes. again it's something which i think a lot of people maybe have an understanding of it being achieved in the past but don't quite comprehend the amount of effort and willpower it will take to continuously swim again for up to 27 hours yeah hopefully i won't be that <laughs> slow you know as my time stand today we're looking at 12 to 16 hours but i've never yep. i've never swum that far without a wetsuit so again i'm stepping into brand new terrain or waters that i've never attempted before or put my body to it i i moved to australia for nine years because i don't like the cold mm -hmm. I, I don't really understand myself why i'm doing this challenge but I need to get used to different regulations of body as well. So again, that comes from my mind to start embracing the cold, Beautiful. to wear less jumpers and hats and scarves when I go out today is even training. So yeah. it's, a, it's a challenge every, on many levels. Every moment that you're experiencing something within the mind, you're experiencing it in the physical. And like you say, mental preparation is just as important as actual physical preparation. And you can train yourself to become better as a word at something just by actually practicing it within your mind. And this isn't imagination. This is actual, this exists. It's reality because the way that we perceive reality is literally our perception of it, as you know. So a past memory doesn't really exist other than within our mind, a forward projection of an event such as what you're doing, you can attach positivity to it and make it positive and make it so you achieve it. Or you could attach negativity to it and not even try to attempt it. That exists in your mind. So what exists in your mind now is then the foundation to create what you would experience tomorrow. So it is very, very important about what we choose to focus our attention on. It's okay to have a negative thought, but then we actually, as you did yourself, with the barrier and perceived limitation of your age. And then you challenged that thought, you sat with it and you moved past it. You didn't try to deny the thought, otherwise it would have remained and actually hindered you going forward. You fully accepted it and you overcame it. And that again is the way to live life in completion. Everything we do is accepting everything and challenging it and moving forward from it with the knowledge that we overcame the previous obstacle the previous hurdle so the next one's going to be easy and just keep skipping joyfully along that path amazing yeah, yeah. And, and what we all what we all know innately is what you've just described and it's beautiful because science is finally catching up as well yes because they've they've taped um monitors on athletes bodies and they've said imagine running mm -hmm. and the same muscles fire and so we are proving now that what we imagine, what we believe in our heart, and that actually can be created physiologically in our body too. We, we release the same chemicals. Yes. So as you said, if we're imagining negativity, we are still releasing those chemicals into our body. Yes. So flipping the switch and seeing it as a, as you know, reframing it to say it's a challenge, it's something new, it's something I can learn and overcome, means we're going to be releasing more positive chemicals into our body. So it happens right here, right now, regardless of what we do in the future. Beautiful, beautiful, 100%. Yeah. yeah. 
And then returning to the cold, the fact uh, that you are getting yourself used to it, coming out of the summer into the, into the winter in England to then attempt the, and achieve the third challenge into 2023. Yep, totally. So why not then cap <laughs> off an epic cycle and a swim with summiting the highest peak in the world? And I have already engaged with a Nepalese uh, tour guide, if you oh, mountaineer, if you uh, mm -hmm. for want of a better word, we've met and we've agreed for me to spend as much time as possible in Nepal beforehand, not just to climatize and start practicing and getting used to working in altitude, but for me to also embrace the the, the spiritual journey of this. I am in a beautiful. very beautiful part of the world, and. It has history and mother nature will allow me to climb the mountain or not, not me. So it's a time for me to also reflect and show gratitude to this beautiful planet that allows me the privilege of experiencing these journeys. So it's, it's very much, it's easy to look at this on a superficial plane and go, it's a girl ticking off certain tick lists on her list. But I really want to make sure that we honor the privilege we have to be able to achieve this. We honor the people before me who have sacrificed their lives to allow me the lifestyle that I have, to allow, to, to show gratitude to the earth as well for opening herself up and allowing us to be part of it. So for me, this is a very much a spiritual journey that I am honoring and building into my journey and my story to make sure that we can honor every single day the, the privileged state we have waking up with a roof over our heads and food on our table as simple as that. But, you know, we can then stretch it to our Everest if we so choose. Beautiful. Beautiful. Whenever I become quiet, it's because I don't quite have the words to express what it is I'm feeling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you is returning back to to the foundations to the simplistic nature of life that we are a tiny fragment of existence we're stardust we're part of the universe and in truth from my perspective and i believe yours we are the universe embodied the universe itself and if we exist in harmony with every other aspect within ourself or the parts of ourselves, such as the part which tries to challenge our ability to go forwards, if we actually accept it and live in harmony with it, then we can go about living in harmony with everybody else and everything else. And the day when we live in balance and harmony with, with the earth and we live with Mother Earth, with Gaia, as opposed to taking from her, is a day that I am... Um, that's why I do what I do. It's the day that we're, cho we're traveling towards and we will experience. We're so far removed from it at the moment, but again, the current situation means that so many more people are going outside. They're walking, they're cycling, they're getting back to being grounded in the present moment. I went to the local park this morning to do some yoga and it was all foggy and misty and it was beautiful and there was people out early out exercising making the most of life and that for me is what it is and you have placed a a pathway an energetic pathway taking you from where you are now to where you're going and you're implementing and integrating every single possible aspect of what is by being grateful for the fact you're able to experience it at all living in harmony with your surroundings, knowing fully well that it's not a case of hoping that the weather's going to be on your side, it's actually creating it so. It's putting in the, the faith and the willpower and the energy into the manifestation of something that will assist you on your journey forwards, knowing that your journey forwards is going to assist countless other people through the inspiration that you'll provide them. Yeah, thank you. And I am blessed. I am grateful. And I'm using this time and my, uh, you know, this challenge has, the limitless challenge has opened up more conversations with 
diverse sectors, different organizations mm -hmm. that I might not necessarily be able to speak to. And I am honoring my privileged state of being a white Westerner woman. Mm -hmm. So I, I am using this space to open up conversations with people who may not necessarily realize that we have those privileges that maybe they're not expressing gratitude for where they are. Maybe they're not realizing without maliciousness or intent that they are in a position where they can help communities they are unaware of that need help. So my, my position here is as a pioneer to, to carve the path, not just for global elevation, but for the people who are potentially creating that glass ceiling without realizing to remove it and open up that doorway to different communities, different genders, different races and cultures, so we can all grow together equally rather than certain peers because of our privileged state. So it's with love I want to open this conversation, not point the finger of shame and blame. As love is always the answer to every question. Whatever the question is, the answer is love, always. Yeah. And that is what I stand for. And that is the, the, the big goal, the big dream, the big vision of my, myself is to create a, a global charity to inspire and empower each and every person to create a world of true equality as it all starts within. If we feel empowered and equal to everybody else, not better, not, not lower, equal then there's no form of separation. There's no form of desire to try to better somebody else or to outdo or compete. And instead we just unite and lift each other. And that is my, my, my title, my tag, United We Stand, Together We Rise. That's what I stand for. That is why I do what I do. And you are doing exactly the same thing from what could be seen as a completely alternate perspective different position but you're still standing for the same reason for the same purposes to express love to express gratitude and inspire others around you to become their greatest versions as well yeah something that we can all learn by and this is specifically directed to people who associate as spiritual because what i've noticed and this is in myself too because i can only see in others what's in me is once we become awakened and spiritual and realize the, the beauty of the world and what we need to all do, we become fixed that that's the path. And by having that fixed mindset opens up an element of judgment who do not follow the same path. There are a million ways to climb the same mountain. There's a million ways to achieve the same goal. By introducing curiosity and intrigue into why certain people choose different paths without that judgment, that will help everyone elevate equally to their own level where they want to establish and follow their own calling and their own path because the closed mindset and the judgment will stop elevation because it, you know, otherwise I'll be sitting here saying to Kane, you should be cycling with me. You should be swimming with me because that's the only way. And I don't think that's your path and it would be wrong if we're going to use that word mm -hmm. to push you to follow me. It's about inspiring you to doing your greatest, your way, not Kate's way. Beautiful. So how is it, first of all, that you go about getting to that point of separation to accept every person as a complete, unique and beautiful individual and also know that the fact that they're not following your path doesn't mean that your path is wrong, let's say, because... <laughs> If you know the answer, I'd love to know because I think this is an ongoing journey. As soon as I accept and embrace one personality and somebody I associate as potentially uh, doing wrong or, or a challenge, I realize that there's another person. So I think this is a forever and a day journey for me. Mm -hmm. um, how, how I cope with it, and this is an individual, so again, there's many ways to do this, and I'd love to hear your feedback as well as potentially your listeners if they want to, to help yes. us grow together. Please. Is, is whenever I feel triggered, when I notice my response, I'm reacting, maybe that's my ego trying to protect me. My, my, what I notice in myself is I bring up my intellect. So as soon as I see me trying to prove I know more than them, I know that I've been triggered internally. 
because that's my defense push away don't like you mm -hmm. and as soon as i see that red flag and the key isn't to remove the red flag it's to remove the time the red flag keeps waving so as soon as i associate that i'm my red flag is flying i find out what is it in me that i haven't started to accept because it's myself what i'm not comfortable in that person is actually in me and so I, it means I have work to do on my past. What happened in the past where I made a decision that this was wrong in a personality? And once I can get at peace with what I, what I did or didn't do at a moment where I feel potentially shame or guilt or anger, then I can look at that person more with compassion and let go and move forward till I see the next red flag in someone else. <laughs> And how have you got yourself to the point where you are able to see the flags? Because that in itself is a, a very, a very powerful thing to be able to do. It's something that we can educate ourselves into. And how have you gone about doing that? Well, I mean, it takes a lot of time and a lot of commitment. I, I usually went like, you know, I think I've been working at this per permanently and consciously since 2012. So that's eight years of, of emotional work with myself and going very deep into quite dark experiences, what happened mm -hmm. to me in my past. Mm -hmm. And I also created just to make sure I'm not just the victim with life happening to me. But the one thing I find the easiest or the most fluid is when I associate to those positive emotions, when I get that new client, when I achieve something great or when I'm feeling excited I use those that as a red flag learning because I'm still attaching an emotion and an outcome to this is good as opposed to the red flag of this is wrong so I start to disconnect from the positive because it's easier to do that we're in a good way we're not going to spiral downwards and start protecting ourselves more so I, I do my best cool. to practice in the positivity still give myself credit, still enjoy the moment, but make sure I do it with an awareness that I have that addiction to that energy so that when the negative energy happens, I've got the practice in place. So you just use the word addiction. So addiction can actually be a positive again, because everything that exists can be viewed from alternate perceptions, different sides. And one side that you could see something as negative or a negative word, the same with money. Money is seen as being a negative. The desire or money is the root of all evil. Actually, the want to, the desire for money, the want for money, the want to control money, maybe is the desire. That Maybe that's the root of all evil. But if we all individually go about changing our attachment to money and accepting it with gratitude and passing it on with gratitude and love, it changes the vibrational imprint of money from being repressive and negative and heavy to freedom and liberating and uplifting. And that again is the potential that we can all go about experiencing and achieving moment to moment as individuals, we collectively create the consciousness of humanity. So yeah. everything that we do not only affects us, it affects everybody around us. And to go back to, the ability to be able to notice and not to want other people to be like you in what you do is because you know you're you. You stand for your own beliefs, your own worths, and you would do so despite what anybody else thought. You would be doing this challenge whether you had backing or not. Am I right? Yes. And you're doing it for who for, are you? For me and for the world. For, for you. Me. Yes. You. Because without you, none of it matters. If you don't put yourself first, if you don't do what is being guided and aligned with your, with your heart, with your soul, then you're not really existing in harmony with who you are. And as we are all individual, and as we are all here to experience individual experiences, collectively, it makes up the consciousness of humanity again and the universe at large. So by, by traveling your true path, you are actually living in alignment with who you are within God's will, if you like. If you go against it, then you feel heavy, you feel oppressive, you feel stuck. 
you then start to look at other people and to judge them or to go, well, they're better than me, so I don't like them, or they're not as good as me, so I'm better than them. It causes all these isms. And any form of ism, any form of separation does come from the ego and the non-understanding or acceptance of whatever it is taking place or the other person. So the fact that you don't understand my path, as an example, but you accept it, means that you're able to stay true to your own because it doesn't matter what I do because you're focused upon what you're doing. And by you uplifting yourself, you then be that beacon of inspiration. As you said before, you create the vacuum to allow others to raise to meet you. If we lower ourselves, then we're only lowering the collective. And the ability to be able to strive forwards with that continued challenging of beliefs and self so when you are triggered when you do see the red flag is to be able to to notice it to accept it because again it doesn't make you any better or worse as a person it's just an experience and for me to get to the point that i have has been surrender i've surrendered not in a way of limited not in a limited way not in a victimhood way because as you said if we play victim then we will receive everything to show us victimhood because actually we're creating it so so the governing laws is that i pay the most attention to is free will and the law of attraction it's our will everything we experience is our will you may not believe that you actually attracted to you negative previous events but they're the events required to look at and address to bring to the surface those elements within yourself to then move past as you've done yourself but a lot of inner inner work a lot of shadow work inner child integration and healings and that's what i do myself on a daily basis as well as with my clients and it is what sets us free because we can then accept everyone in completion only once we accept ourselves in completion as every time we don't accept somebody outside ourselves, like you said before, you realize it's something within yourself to look at. But it takes a very special level of understanding and awareness to get to that point. But to say special again makes it seem that it's unreachable, but it's not because it's just the truth to who we are. We're just told that you're a certain age, you're a certain color, you're a certain sex, you're a certain placement in society dependent on what you do and what you've achieved and your job and your beliefs, your religions, etc. These are all labels and labels separate. When we come back to unity with ourself, we can then unify with everybody else, not trying to control them to the point where we can see another person being empathetic, going through this spiritual journey. I used to I used to lower myself through the desire not to want another person to, to be negatively affected by me being raised or above them in that egoic perception. And I also used to feel so deeply another person's pain that it would put me on my knees, but then I'm useless and limited to experience my own experiences and to assist others in doing the same. So being able to view another person in pain, knowing that actually that's part of their story, part of their journey. They're a character in my play, in my game. And it's for me to be be triggered by it and then to look at the reasons why and to address it and to move past it, to transcend and integrate those parts or to accept it. And if I accept another person in pain, knowing that it's just an experience in reality, then it's beautiful. It's just an experience. And I can just allow for the experience to take place knowing it's part of their journey. And it's, for me, it's meditation. Meditation has been the, the doorway to a world of potential beyond what I previously even imagined possible to experience and to, to achieve. And, and I'm very, I'm only early stages through my journey and the world the world itself let alone me but the entire world has changed because i look at it through a new lens i look at the positivity and the joy and the love in the world so that's what i see because that's what i'm looking for yeah that's really beautiful and you're you're also honoring the divine greatness in every individual because if you swoop in and help everyone there's a certain assumptive that they can't do it without you exactly and the muscles are grown in those points of pain if I was in pain on my bicycle, just to bring it back to, to the record, mm-hmm. 
if you jumped on the bike and did 10 minutes for me, where's my growing? Where's my strength? Mm -hmm. I won't be able to accomplish my records, even though you're helping me in the short term, it's not allowing me to grow to the level I need to for the game I'm playing, the size of life I want to live. Beautiful. We need to honor that this strength within, help me discover it within me, help me find how I can stay on that bike for a little bit longer or deal with that breakup or that emotional trauma or whatever, whatever's limiting me to see myself in my greatness, mm -hmm. but don't take away that lesson. That's mine. Thank so yeah, you. it's very beautiful what you said. And we can relate that to bringing up children because inside ourselves as a child, and it's the inner child within ourselves that often believes that we're not good enough, that we're not worthy, that we're not capable. And if we link it back to experiences as a child, perhaps you were going to go about trying to achieve something for yourself, go into even something as simple as making yourself a sandwich. And your parent says, no, don't do that. I'll do it for you. You then feel that you're not good enough to make yourself a sandwich. And the smallest of little events, if they build up and snowball through our life, can lead us to a point where we don't even feel good enough to, to cook our own dinner. And that is all through our perception of an event in the past that our parent was just trying to provide and protect us, just as the ego is trying to protect us. But it's separating an attachment to it going, okay, just because I was educated in that previous way, doesn't actually mean it's correct let's have a look for alternate views alternate perspectives and just as you were saying about me taking 10 minutes away from your training if i was to sit on the bike and do 10 minutes then i would most likely get to a point where i was becoming exerted where 10 minutes for you is effortless so it's continuously challenging those barriers as well so by me doing 10 minutes today I can do 12 minutes tomorrow and I can continue to grow outside of what I was able to previously experience. And again, it all starts in the mind just mm. with that glass ceiling. And it's, it's moving through the ceiling. It's not breaking it necessarily. It's just moving past it, realizing that actually it was never there in the first place. It's just a, a self-created and again, using the word ego, egoically, egoically created barrier that keeps you safe in what the ego understands because again what it understands it accepts if the ego doesn't understand through miseducation or not miss but limited education as a child if you're born into a, a middle class white background and you're educated in the way of business and etc etc but never actually culturally educated if you don't understand another culture then your ego will feel threatened by the fact it doesn't understand them. And whatever the ego doesn't understand, it tries to condemn because it needs to be the mighty ego. I don't understand your culture. Therefore, I'm either going to believe that I'm wrong or not good enough because I don't understand, or I'll repress you and I'll condemn you because I don't understand it. So therefore it must be wrong. It's the form of all separation is the ego, but it is there to try to keep us safe. So again, it's education. We link back to education. It's always education. And it starts from the ground up, from the foundations. It's the education of the children. It's the education of the fact that we are all equal, that we all deserve and desire to experience the same connection, the same happiness, the same joy, that we live in a world of abundance. And why is there some people that struggle to feed themselves and their family and other people that frivolously throw away multi millions of dollars in things that they don't need year on year because they have so much it's mm -hmm. it's getting back to that balance and finding as always the middle the middle path and taking that elevation of the middle ground continuously raising as we continuously raise ourselves up yeah Beautiful. it's we can still learn in 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 any age mm -hmm. and it's about that curiosity how can we get curious in why people choose the path of scarcity and others choose the path of overabundance or opulence mm -hmm. and to discover what happens in their life. As you said, you know, something happened in the past where they made a decision, you know, I am not good enough. Therefore I will have everything. How can we allow them to feel enough without over, over buying everything or over wasting 
as the same as I'm not good enough, therefore I don't deserve anything. Maybe they have the same pain and can learn together. Mm-hmm. It's about us bringing that learning united to adults as well as to children. Beautiful. And quite often when you do, do the inner work, especially parts integration, two parts that seem worlds apart will, will oft but always exist for the same purpose. The reason that all parts, all programs, all manner of self, it's all to do with self-preservation. So any time that you limit yourself, oh, I don't feel good enough, is because actually that program is there to keep you safe from trauma. Everything that is running is there to preserve your your body and your your life to keep you safe to keep you alive so again if you're fearful of something you will most probably not experience it because the desire to keep yourself safe is so strong so if we challenge day by day just as increasing the ability to cycle two minutes further if we challenge our fears daily then we realize that what is there to be fearful of and if you take it to the biggest and grandest of scales again the simplistic truth of our life is that we are all born and we all die. And in the middle, we all have one thing in common. We all have time. We all have the same amount of time each day. And it depends on what we choose to, to focus it on and what we use it on. We can use it on into just ingesting mindlessly the media around us and the food that is packaged and, you know, living very narrow tracked lives as it were but again if that's your choice then that is your choice and that's perfect as it is as the global and universal experience because each and every one of us adds a different element to it and just as in a film there's characters which are positive negative there's characters which challenge you there's characters which liberate you and uplift you and each and every person plays a unique role in everybody else's life in the universe itself and everybody is playing their role perfectly. So again, linking back to events of, oh, somebody that did you wrong actually played the role in your life exactly the way they were required. And it's then up to you to learn and to grow from those events and to allow by accepting them. And returning yeah. back, to, back to the heart again, back to knowing that in between being born and dying, actually life is just an adventure, it's the journey. And it doesn't matter. You're reaching your destination. You've already achieved all of your records because you have, because it's in your mind and you've made it so. So it's enjoying the moment of now up until that point. Because if the journey there is tired, tiring and, and troublesome and dark and heavy, then it's actually going to limit the ability to be able to get to that destination. If we skip joyfully with excitement in order to be able with the knowledge we're able to achieve it we're able to experience it even because life is the beautiful gift that it is life is the prize there's nothing to one there's no wars to be done there's nothing to fight there's not even really anything to achieve because a single breath in and out is an achievement but it's an experience and everything we experience is just that is part of this beautiful this beautiful rhythmic dance that we call life and it's for me it's returning to to gratitude to love being the answer always and to excitement being the fuel in what drives us forwards in what we do yeah very wise words and and wholly true just expressing curiosity acknowledgement gratitude and love that's all we want every day we don't need to wait till till that world records or till we have that job or have that partner or whatever other future storytelling we've told ourselves, we can have it now. Yes. Beautiful. And you've mentioned curiosity a few times. And again, it's, it's bringing that element of childlike curiosity back to the table, because if we're curious about things, thinking the way that a child looks at the world, it's through the eyes of wonderment. Everything's a miracle. Everything's beautiful. And we separate from that through adult life because we become so focused on needing to do something Mm. being single minded almost having one path of i need to go to work so i need to pay my bills so i need to pay the mortgage so i need to do this i need to do that and it becomes very needing as opposed to just children are there's no desire to do anything other than just experience and being curious if you're curious it takes away 
potential fears and dangers because a child is curious to go over and touch a spider. It's only once you're educated that the spider is dangerous, that the curiosity is removed, and then it becomes something that we're fearful of. Oh, there's a spider. I was once curious about it, and I would actually go over and watch it and learn from it. Now I'm fearful. I've put a, a, a black box over it, and I'll never experience anything from that spider that I would otherwise have been able to through curiosity. Yeah, very true. It's, I think children are our greatest lessons. I remember, um, I don't have children by choice. And a few years ago, I was with a friend who does, and I was watching them play and thought, if we all changed our mindset that we are here to teach them, but they were actually here to teach us, they were actually our educators. Mm -hmm. Imagine how much we could learn if we, you know, if a child falls over, it cries. If it doesn't get it, what it wants, it, it expresses anger. But the next minute, it's in the present moment, it's completely forgotten. Yep. That, that release of living in the present and not dragging the past of six weeks ago, do you remember what you did? And I've got a, a list to prove <laughs> how right I am. That doesn't exist for children. We, we can learn so much if we look at them as our teachers to elevate them above us, mm -hmm. to show us the way, mm -hmm. not the other way around. Beautiful. And that reminds me of a, a lesson that my nephew gifted me in the summer and I actually shared in a video um, that I made and it was to do with setting the pace of life because again life is a journey and if you view life as a journey to work we can either travel to work in a car and everything zooms past as a blur if we cycle slow down a little bit we can make out different details and different structures to our surrounding but it's still a blur we walk and then we can actually notice each individual flower in the meadow we're walking past as an example but it's not until we stop that we actually connect to our surroundings and realize that we're not separate to mother nature and it's one of my most beautiful the, the thing that i love to do the most is just to go and sit outside and connect to the clouds to connect to the trees the leaves and be one with nature and then it dissipates all removal of physical structure and physical separation i become one with nature and i become one with everybody else through it mm -hmm. and we went on a walk a family walk and we were going for a walk in the woods and everybody was walking at a fast pace and my nephew and his dad ended up near the back because he's two and he wants to explore and play and then my my brother was getting a little bit frustrated with his son because he wanted him to hurry up so that he could stay with the group, which is a completely normal thing. You see it all the time. Come on, hurry up. We're, we're going for a walk. We're late. We're late. But in truth, you're going for a walk. You've not, you don't, you're not going anywhere. You're just going for a walk. So what does it matter if you walk 10 yards or 100 yards? It's the enrichment of the experience which counts. So I actually stopped and, and stayed back and I realized afterwards what I'd done was I'd projected my energy around my nephew to keep him safe because nobody was going to tell me to hurry up so I stayed back with him everybody else went off and I stayed and sat in the mud with him and he taught me a very important lesson that we were sat there for about five minutes just playing with a single piece of mud but actually in that single piece of mud not it's not just brown if you look at it it's made up of lots of different elements and there's a little bit of sand in there there's a little bit of clay there's all these different elements and materials that actually make up that single that single piece of mud and it's not the pace that really matters it's the experience you can run if you're focused on the enjoyment of it but if you separate from the experience because you're so focused on the destination again what's the point in taking the journey so let children set the pace of a walk next time you go out for a walk everybody listening now please allow for your child if you've got small children for them to set the pace for them to choose the direction just because you've always taken a certain path around the park as an example and you walk to a certain point and then you walk back or you walk in a loop Allow for them to make a different choice. Allow for them to create a different path. And then in that path, you will experience new things that you wouldn't otherwise have experienced. 
and you're doing so because your child has brought you that that information that experience and set you free from boundaries that you would otherwise continue to walk upon slow down enjoy your surroundings take a deep breath in and out and actually ground yourself back into the current moment and realize that it is all a gift and that in this present moment the, the now that everything is perfect it's only when we project ourselves forwards and look for potential dangers and fearful factors that we then become repressed oh no but that might happen but it's not has it so stop focusing on it because you're actually more likely to create it by focusing on it because again the law of attraction whatever you vibrate at yourself you attract and it's all just a mirror from what is inside to out so absolutely yeah. beautiful yeah and we can be free and have crazy high goals we don't mm -hmm. need to live one or the other we can have it all so you know that's something also i'm trying well i am striving to show and demonstrate we can be spiritual and allow the ego to strive for that that top level yes we don't have to live in compartmentalized and separation thank you that's so important So if we want to have an abundance of X, wealth, acknowledgement, fame, joy, gratitude, love, and keep our roots in spirituality, we can. It's up to us and our choice. So strive to be your best. Strive for what you want in your heart, the greatest you can have. Mm -hmm. And make sure that you ra radiate it out to, to show to people that it is possible. Beautiful. Because... And becoming your greatest version as that's the the title of my website is greatestversion.club and in truth all you need to do to become your greatest version is live in alignment with your truest self and then you're already there i'm living my greatest life i'm not surrounded by massive material abundance at, at present but it is going to be something experienced because of the acceptance of it to channel through to grow the movement if personally if i separate myself and only want it for me then there will never be that freedom of flow mm -hmm. but the ego is not an enemy a lot of people go ego death ego it's there yeah. to limit you it's there to keep you safe and it's better to have it on side than it is to try to work against it you give the ego what it feels that it wants to experience. You give it its feeling of pride and satisfaction because it will then work with you to go forwards and experience even more than you were able to prior. If you don't, if you try and push it away, it will find every reason to limit you and to hold you back and to keep you safe within its control. Yeah. yeah, it is part of us and we need... We need to, and I strongly recommend we all love every part of us. It's just choosing the matter of choice what is expressed and shown. That's what we can master. That all of us is beautiful and perfect, as you have said quite a few times. And <laughs> it's true. So, so yeah. to love the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah, very much so. So, anybody that wanted to connect with you again, this allow for screen sharing one moment. So this is your website. Again, it is very strong in its imagery and its branding. It's very inspirational. And this is a platform that people are able to connect with you on to learn a bit more about yourself and what you're doing and actually book you to, to coach them in what they're doing. Yes. Yeah. So on the right-hand side, I'm also on most social media platforms. You can just see on the menu. Mm -hmm. So feel free. Sorry, I'm on the website, on the menu. So yeah, feel free to connect with me there. So this is your Instagram? Yes, it is. So for my world records, I am looking for sponsors and partners to be able to champion their business, their message, as well as uh, supporting me on my own. So if you are interested, then I'm more than happy to have a conversation about that. Okay. And of course, the Limitless Challenge is coming very soon. So that's very exciting with a documentary and quite possibly a book as well to follow. Amazing. Where, where's the documentary going to be? It's following the entire duration of my uh, journey and my training. 
Mm-hmm. So it will be around all of this. It's currently being shot at the moment. Amazing. And we are negotiating with which, um, what do you call them? Publisher or media outlet will be yeah. uh, showing it on their channel. So once I know that, it will definitely be shared on the website as well. Amazing. Amazing. So we've got a, a, a movie star. <laughs> and that is required. The ego needs to be part of that process to allow you the confidence to stand up in front of people. But we can also, for myself, is allowing the ego to be expressive and experiencing it all, but also separating from any desire or attachment to it. When I deliver information, it's not me. I'm just allowing myself to be that channel that the information flows through. Yeah. Yeah, I am not a world champion triathlete. I am not a world record holder. I am Kate Strong, who has accomplished certain elements in my life. But it does not, that that identity, that egoic Mm -hmm. pride that I'm so, I am proud of what I've accomplished and what I will accomplish. That is not me. That's an aspect of what I have accomplished in this earth. First and foremost, I am, as you said, a beacon of light, like all of us and an element of love to show express compassion. Amazing. Thank you. And anybody that is looking for an inspirational coach, a visionary, a, an element of attachment to put your focus within yourself upon. So it's igniting the ability within yourself because you are a limitless being. Kate is an embodiment of this. The self-belief which she houses and projects is clear to see. And if you are interested in connecting with her, I strongly recommend you do go over and book an initial consultation so that you can discuss the journey forward together. She is an amazing, amazing coach and I am myself, but in a different Avenue, I do integration of, I take people through journeys through the darkness so that they can get to the point where they have that self belief and worth potential that you are then able to grow and develop within them and take them to new levels that they would otherwise not be able to even comprehend experiencing. So beautiful. And each and every one of us, again, is perfectly placed with our unique abilities and talents to continue to grow this beautiful experience together that we call life. Yeah. Yeah. And what I I really appreciate with your coaching that I see mirrors in my own is we, people don't need us. We're not here to fix or, or to, to do for others. We're here just to display within each of, each of us what is already there. So my job is to remove the, 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 the covering of what they don't think they can do. Mm-hmm. And at the end of most of my sessions, people don't understand why they were working with me, which is music to my ears, because <laughs> it means they see it in themselves. So Amazing. that's what I want is I want people to see the greatness in themselves, to be empowered, not yes. dependent. And I yes. see that in your coaching as well. Yes, a hundred percent. And just as you said that you've got a guide for Everest, that is what we are. We're guides. If you were to take a journey through a rainforest, it would be you walking the path, you taking the journey to reach the treasures at the depths of the, of the forest. And when we enter into the darkness within the mind, within, within the internal self, it can be a very scary and a journey that not many people even think about taking, let alone want to take. So I'm a guide. I guide people through the darkness and I walk with them to direct them to the treasures within. But it's them that takes the journey. It's them that picks up the key within and as I say, I can provide you the key, but it's you that picks it up and uses it to unlock the door. And it is beautiful because like you say, it all rests with him. And when, when a client becomes a, a point where they start trying to, to coach you, that's when you know that they've reached a level that is, is beautiful, that they can go out and, and be my coach, my teacher, as life is the greatest teacher of all. I'm your teacher as you are mine, as every experience is in itself. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, Thank you so much. Mm. <laughs> okay. It's been an absolute honor. Thank you. Truly. It's truly. It's, again, I've words when words escape me, I know that there aren't words to express. So. Thank you. And thank you as well. We, 
we've spoken a few times off off air and every time I've left with with a feeling no of knowing of knowing that who we are is is it the right time at the right place what I am doing is the right calling for me as well so thank you as well for the gift you bring into this world and allowing me to share it with with your with your tribe with your audience thank you no thank you for sharing and I'm sure that there's going to be many many future connects because even our connect was not by chance because nothing is but if we didn't act upon that connect then it wouldn't have grown to this point now Whereas mm-hmm. when we know that there is something there for a purpose, it's up to us to take hold of it and to, to follow it and to put the effort and the attention into it. So beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank the universe. Thank me. Thank, thank us. Thank us all. Yes. And thank you for listening, everyone out there who... Yes. I hope you will bring the faceless to the face and, and connect. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. And then the, I'll, I'll leave a link to all of your socials and the website and the, the world record, which is obviously the biggest, the biggest energy focus at the moment. And when it comes to that point, I will ensure that I will share the information when you come to the day so that we're all directing that positive energy and that, that focus of attention towards you. Because the more you can bring in that positive energy, the more effortless it will be so yeah thank you thank you we'll be um i'm currently organizing uh like on like webinars people can dial in throughout the day as well to be live in in the world record as well so once i have some more information about that i will uh, definitely send it to you yeah please do so great and sorry for the light it suddenly went very sunny when i'm halfway through this how how dare you you shine son (laughs) I know, I know. So yeah. Well, it was a pleasure. I I do have to dash. I'm seeing my physiotherapist in 45 minutes and it's uh, it's a little, it's about 45 minute drive. So perfect timing. (laughs) Perfect. Perfect always. Thank you. you. I look forward to speaking to you soon. We will. All my love. Have the most beautiful rest of the day. You too. And thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. There we go. What an absolutely phenomenal interview. Inspiration embodied. I don't know. Honestly, when I'm lost for words, I know that it's because there isn't physical representation of the energy which I'm feeling. Tell me again. What is it that you're working towards? What is it that your dreams are? And what is it that you're doing to go about achieving them? Believe you can or believe you can't, and either way, you're correct. If you limit yourself to only be able to ever experience that within your current understanding, within your egoic bubble of protection, then that's all you'll ever experience. Push the boundaries. Challenge yourself daily, not so much even within the physical, but within the mental. Something as simple as taking a new route to work, a new direction on a walk, cleaning your teeth with your other hand. It actually fires new neurological pathways within your mind. It creates new neurons that then fire together and those that fire together wire together. And then all of a sudden you can experience something that you previously didn't even comprehend possible. I know this to be true myself because of the journey I've been upon. And something as simple as just a walk or even jog around the block and timing yourself and continuously striving to overcome previous barriers is not to do with becoming better. It's just to continue to strive forward and expand your awareness of potential and possibility. What you look for is what you see. And what you see in reality within your world is what you look for look for the positivity look for the expansion look for the liberation look for the freedom look for the connection and harmony within yourself and with everybody else and at the current moment in time look into another person's eyes connect to their soul and shine your light and your love to them 
and it will dissolve all masks and layers of separation and illusions of fear that others are projecting or believing themselves to be existing within. Take down those walls of separation. And let us together unite in a world of true equality and liberation. I love you all. I thank you as always for being part of my journey as I am part of yours. And I look forward to connecting with you again in next week's episode, which is actually going to be all about the inner child and keeping in alignment and connected to that childlike wonderment and joy, keeping playful in all we do, keeping free, keeping expansive, skipping and laughing along the way as opposed to feeling that we are having to carry the weight of the world and drag it along with us. So until next time, have the most beautiful day and rest of the week and be mindful of what you choose to focus your attention on and to grow. Mindfulness, modern day mindfulness, is a very important aspect and it is actually the latest series that I have recently released on YouTube. It takes us through a step-by-step -step understanding of what the ego is, what fear is, and how to actually go about addressing them and to work in harmony with both elements of existence, as well as depression being the first three videos my journey through depression what depression is and how to go about actually living free from that deep rest but again knowing that it is part of the journey and it is perfect as it is just a state of deep rest and sometimes we need to go into rest on a very deep level to be able to move outside and bypass what was previously seen as a limitation when you stop trying, when you actually let go of your previously viewed reality, you can go, okay, actually, well, the world's not like that at all. So huh, let's look over there and see what we can find. Everything happens for you, not to you, and you create it all. Whether you realize this or not, on the deepest level of consciousness, it's all created for you and for your journey. So head over to YouTube, Modern Day Mindfulness, and the series that will be released soon is The Five Steps to Freedom, where we go on a journey through all five steps from acknowledgement of an issue to acceptance of it, to learning from it, to separating attachment to it, and then recreating everything within your life. As an example, if you're walking on a path, the journey through life, and something falls, tree falls over and blocks your route, if you don't acknowledge it, it is there and accept it. You'll never overcome it. You'll never learn to, to move past it or just to climb over it. You'll just become stuck. And until you accept all issues, all events of old, including the ones you've done yourself, then you will be stuck and hindered by them, held back from them. The next meditation on mainstream meditation, mainstream meditation, the mainstream meditation YouTube channel is... And unconditional love connect back to the unconditional love that you are and also i'm recording a guilt removal that i will share soon i have recorded it and i will upload it very shortly so you reconnect back to the love that you are remove all the attachment to guilt and the repression that you put upon yourself to then become that free and limitless being in all ways so please go over to youtube subscribe to the cosmic surfer youtube channel and watch the new series there as well as the other two weekly episodes so tuesday modern day mindfulness thursday united we stand and saturday is together we rise mainstream meditation and then obviously continue to listen to be part of this beautiful movement midday mindfulness and please share this podcast with anybody that you know that might resonate with it that it might assist upon their journey and again all the video content for anybody who wants to see all the links and to see kate's beautiful smiling face it will all be uploaded to youtube on the thursday episodes of united we stand as thursdays are uploads of the podcast and live connections with other like-minded and beautiful beings from around the world
thank you once again for everything you do. And until I connect with you again, be mindful. Hmm. Ground yourself into this beautiful moment of now and enjoy each and every experience for the gift that it is. Love, light, and infinite blessings. Namaste. Thank you.